All right, now that we have painted our value scale two different ways, I'm going to kind of focus on this mixing and blending way of making a value scale and create a three-dimensional effect of a sphere on my sheet. So I'm gonna give you reference photos like this um, for your table so that you have something to look at while you paint. Um, the reason I've put the stripes on there is a kind of a visual reference for thinking about that each of these kind of represents color going from light to dark um, on our uh, image. So I'm going to start with um, really dark paint down here at the bottom. And I'm going to gradually add in the color that I'm going to use. I'm keeping with the cobalt turquoise that I used up top just because it's a visual reference for me um, for the values. I can see how uh, dark it gets. I can see how light it gets. So you can see I've blended that cobalt into my black paint, but it's still darker down here at the bottom. If I feel like I made it a little too light, which I kind of feel like I did, I can go ahead and grab a little bit more of my paint, the darker. Also notice that as I'm painting, um, I am following those kind of dotted lines so that my brush strokes stay curved. Um, when we worked in watercolor, we didn't have to worry about brush strokes or talk about brush strokes because your brush work kind of disappears into the puddle um, a little bit as your paint dries. Now I have to think about how I'm using my paintbrush and I do know that on a curved object in particular, if I don't use curved lines or curved brushwork, my object is less likely to feel round when I'm finished with my painting. So you'll notice that I'm kind of using those dotted lines as a path to follow while I'm painting. I'm now to the place where I'm gonna to need to add some white and have a highlight. And so I've cleaned my paintbrush out and I'm wiping it dry and I'm gonna just pull some of this lighter blue. This is another advantage from using the same color that I used of my value scale because I still have the color on my palette mixed with white and it's still fresh. So I can go ahead and just grab from that little pile. I, I grabbed a little more turquoise, obviously, and it got way too dark. So I've cleaned and dried my paintbrush off again. And you see what I'm working to do is kind of blend and soften that lighter area out and into the darker area so that I don't have a stripe or a stop. I am going to put a highlight on here, clean my paintbrush out again and squeeze it dry so that I can blend this out into the blue paint that I added on. I want uh, as much as possible to have a full representation of the values that are above on my value scale. So that is what I'm thinking about trying to replicate here as I'm working. I'm also wanting my values to change really gradually. I don't want starts or stops or stripes as much as possible. And so that is something else that I'm working on. Um, I have a clean, dry paintbrush now and no paint. And I'm just going to use this now as a bit of a blending tool. 
just to kind of soften where I've added the white into where on the sphere I had just added blue. A little bit more of the turquoise here. And once I feel like I've, I have a reasonable three-dimensional version of my object, I can go ahead and just use some of the black. Or really, it's Payne's gray, so it's, it is a super, super dark, like, navy blue. And go ahead and paint in my cast shadow for my object. So go ahead and use your value scale to paint the sphere on your sheet.